Uh, coming through. Let's have a look, Dave. Yeah, I haven't got my phone. You okay? Yeah, no, I was literally. I was, <laughs> I was just, like, Dave, are you are. Right? Yeah, no, no. have, have you glitched? Have no, you no, no. I was literally just feeling around for my phone, thinking I need it for the questions. <laughs> but um, definitely, definitely. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, who's yours going to be first? Is yours going to be uh, Louise? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's have a little look, because hopefully this week we would only tech gremlins, because last week the um the, 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 the comments didn't exactly work that well. They, did they didn't work, did they? So yeah, um, we need comments. It. it Basically, so hopefully we can see the comments this week because last week it was you were a bit blind. It was irksome. Um, but let's have a look. Let's wait for a few people to join and also for a few people to comment as well. Let's have a little look. Yeah. Drop your comments in. Just let us know who's around. No one's here yet. Um, get the Tuesday off. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm. Oh, here we, we go. Are, here yeah, we yeah. go. We're loading now. Here we are. Tom Great Keach. Stuff. Tom Keach, you win the first one. Well done, mate. Jimbo Blues. Bry Bry McCabe. Bry, how are you on the Tuesday tuning? You're supposed to be pulling a sledge. Yeah, well done, Brian, doing that, mate. That looked uh, like a good challenge, good prep for Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Um, if anyone's looking for any altitude training, just uh, become friends with Brian on Facebook and look at what he's been doing with his, his sledge. But also, if anyone wants to go to Killy and not walk, <laughs> go with Brian because he'll pull you on the sledge. But, mate, it looks like an awesome effort for a really worthy cause as well. Yeah. So, yeah, just to everybody, um, head over to Brian's page. Um, there's a fundraising thing on there and um, yeah, sh share a couple of shekels for him because he's doing a really good thing for a really good cause. Awesome. Well, look, um, yeah, today is, uh, you know, we, we were kind of thinking, um, you know, what can we chat about? And I know, Dave, you're, you're going to Morocco tomorrow. Um, Shit, is it, oh, is it tomorrow? It's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. Yeah, That's we'll fine. be there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, uh, actually, it's Thursday. 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 Yeah, I was going to say, tomorrow, yeah, right? I was going to say, if it's tomorrow, I'm seriously worried because I'm supposed to be at the airport. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, well, you're flying on Thursday, and, and part of that is obviously trip preparation. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as that, the lesser spotted Yeti, Jen, uh, my wife, she's um, she's also going to Morocco. She is, yeah. Uh, and we, and obviously, I've seen this week, uh, because Jen hasn't been to high altitude before. It's crazy. All no. this time, it's usually me going on these adventures. And um, I decided to take a back seat this time and uh, and get Jen. Wanted to take on Toucan. I think she's yeah, well, smash it's like, it. you know, it's nice for me to have a holiday. <laughs> Is it, Dave? Yeah, well, I've never done a Tuesday tune in from like, you know, where did you go? Uh, we were in Tenerife at the yeah, time. Tenerife, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's laptops, man. You can take these. Yeah, no, exactly. There's signal. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just just from doing this, you know, it was quite interesting because we had a lot of similar questions that come from um, Evertrackers, especially maybe uh, sort of, uh, you know, altitude first timers um, about trip preparation, about packing, about, you know, last things to take and just those those little things that maybe you might forget before you go on a, on a trek. So we thought, right, let's let's talk about that today. Um, <laughs> Jerome's rebranded. I know. The designated rock carrier to rock, rock god. god. And uh, I've got to be honest, change verified. I, I can see I like him. It. Although, I, when you say that, I, I feel like he's holding a guitar instead of a rock. Well, you know yeah. I mean? so that, that's, that's the inference, is that <laughs> he is a rock god on the mountain. He's like the rock star of the main. Is that what it is? Yeah. Jerome, you are now the rock star of the mountains. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that the drop on the floor? Is it? No, no, that's just my seat. Okay. It's I'm creepy. not saying anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's not my seat. I've actually borrowed Jody's seat, so it's not used to supporting this much uh, this much pain. Ah, oh, nice. Well, it's it's great to see everyone on. Um, a lot of people asking, how was the swim, Dave? How was the swim? Uh, what well, was a range of emotions actually? Um, uh, you the... you should see the beginning to the end. Yeah. Uh, I did 15 minutes, like fully well uh, over my head, but submerged up to here. Yeah. Don't worry. And um, that was really good. But I was actually in there more like 19 minutes. Because there was four minutes where I was stood up and I just couldn't bring myself to lower myself. Um, yeah, it's absolutely horrific. <laughs> uh, and then, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I tell you what, it was weird. I've heard a lot about cold water therapy. Yeah. And uh, we were talking in the car this morning, and I think I might start introducing it to my daily life. Because one thing that I tend to struggle with um, due to um, ADD brain yeah. is having a clear head, mindfulness. Okay. Not having intrusive thoughts um, about this, that, and the other, and um, I think that was Rosie sending me the international signal for. I don't know, panic. I don't uh, know what it is. Yes, yeah, panic, <laughs> isn't it? It was just like I, I wonder what was going on there, Rosie. I hope you're okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah other yetis get involved, but yeah. Yeah, but no, it was absolutely, it was amazing, and uh, I found that there was a, a, a real quiet moment when I was in the in the drink. Nice. But you know, more of that to come. 
um in next week next week yeah because although the the river taff is is is, is lovely and warm yeah um we're gonna go to the yeah, mountains oh, so, next week. so warm <laughs> i can see why rosie rosie is selling because basically we're obviously raising money for breaking out rescue and the more people donate is the longer that we um there's a lot of the team actually because myself you you vicky um yeah, we got rosie we've got zach we're all going into um nice little river up near um Penavan, yeah um, next friday so it's a week friday um and the more we raise between now and then we'll obviously stay in there as long as we can yeah. so we're just getting some practice in right now um but yeah it's nice to see everyone asking about it um talking about preparation you didn't have any prep you went straight in mate so uh well, well i'll be honest with you we talked about the great tournament because uh, i'll be honest i was i was relatively grumpy about the whole process <laughs> um you yeah, were you were not happy about it at all but and, you did uh, you did really well mate. and, really and well. there is no it might it might just have changed my life i love um uh, was it laura saying that i find swimming is one of very few things that clears my brain it did honest to god i was still yeah. feeling the effects when i went to sleep at night really interesting yeah the cold water therapy thing i think might be real and you know what I think it is? It's because you're in such, there's such an intense sensation happening because yeah. of the cold, and it's so, it just permeates your whole being. Mm. That I, I we were stood in front of the weir, so we just had, we had a bit of, um, it's quite a bit of flow. Yeah, quite a bit of current from the weir. Yeah, it was, it was all, yeah, yeah. But I was sitting there watching, I was watching this bird on the weir, and it only occurred to me afterwards that I wasn't thinking about anything. Really? That nice. I, I, I can mindfulness. I literally mindfulness. met I literally afterwards when you, I think you broke me out of it by going, oh, come on, Dave, ready? And then I was like, Oh, sorry. And then I realized I was completely blank. Yeah. It was the it was an extract of mindfulness. Mate, that's great, though. Yeah, it? It's hard it, to find if you, that. If you can bottle and sell it, yeah. I mean I suppose you could the tap. But I don't know if I, it I would wouldn't, work. I I I'm not sure you get much for the river tap. Yeah, but days, if you but, could um, if you could yeah. bottle that feeling, yeah. it would um well, I'd go as far as to say it was profaned. Really? Um, Dave, this is deep. I may... Well, I mean, it wasn't that deep, but I mean, deep. Yeah, I may do more of it and really? talk about it a little bit of it and stuff like that. Well, look, um, yeah, we don't want to kind of spoil the surprise. Anyway, today's got... live is about trip tri 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 <laughs> prep. <laughs> nothing to do with, <laughs> with cold, to do water, with cold water. Um, but no, no, it's great. And, I, and listening to a few people off the back of it as well, I think Richard there, love cold water therapy, have an ice barrel. You know what, Rich, I've been thinking about getting one of those for the house definitely need to source one i know etsy is usually a good place right let us know where you got yours you could make one i suppose i could actually you yeah. could make a I barrel a bar. seal it yeah and then like just get but they do those inflatable ones i keep seeing them on facebook oh, i know but there's something about having a wooden rustic version with some wooden steps you know what you could do okay bath as in b-a-t-h yeah 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 just use it use a bath <laughs> yeah i don't know why i was thinking the place rather than the actual <laughs> Sorry, we're going right off tangent now. Yeah. Oh my God. Trip prep. Uh, right, trip prep. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And we, we can see. Obviously, it's great to see so many um, ever trackers on as well. Not nice to see everyone on this lovely Tuesday. I can't believe we're almost into December, which is yeah. nuts. Absolutely nuts. And we've got our. I think yeah, I'd be remiss without saying we've got our last trip to Everest at the moment. We've got our last. Well, saying that the last actual trip to run is actually your trip this year, mm. but we've got our last group oh, yeah. on the way to Everest Signing right now. Off. Yeah, he's signing, signing off. the year off with the Eugene trip. and Zach. Well, um, we've got some yeti I was going to say, off. yeah, because I haven't been on one, but I have been on one. Barrel. I did two cal first time round. Well, uh, cheers, cheers, Rich. I'll, I'll check that guy out, Barrel Man, who refurbished old whiskey barrels on Facebook. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to send me the link on that. Uh, that sounds a uh, sounds a barrel of laughs. Um, sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> sorry, Richard, I got these. <laughs> this is what we this is what dave's got to put up with but luckily you know uh i, I can get away with it sometimes yeah but um <laughs> yeah trip prep <laughs> well we're 10 minutes in <laughs> Does it, um, i feel like yeah. we're a very big tangent so, today sorry yeah. sorry uh, um yes trip it's, been, it's been the forefront of our mind particularly yes. because um uh jen uh the lesser spot of yeti yeah um greater wife of andy um <laughs> is uh it's her first time at altitude so yeah. there's been a lot of um you know what do i need what do i need type thing yeah um and also i've been packing as well and and going through everything that i need and zach um, for zach he's yeah. been nailing the training so, he's got the pen van a couple of times this week exactly so the whole office has been sort of awash with you know different types of prep happening at different times um i think i've done most of my training on the mountain bike yeah you've been nailing the mountain bike uh mainly because I've done a bit of walking but not too much yeah mainly the bike because i do the bike as fun right you know yeah and yeah. i've combined the two and uh, no, i feel feel like fitness feel like i'm in a good place 
good man. Um, well, could, I can't could, wait. It could be a few pounds lighter, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I've gained, well, I gained a, yeah, you know, that 100%. Like, like I, I've started on the downward path, but after the knee, yeah, I, I know it wasn't all at once, but there's been this gradual increase of weight. Okay. And I think that's down to not training as much as I did pre injury and eating more and so this stuff is like this that. is the so this, so this, this is a, so this, this is a change tupacal i'm ready Zip. i'm ready for tupacal but i'm also hoping that it's going to springboard me into the new year nice. with a momentum that i you know because i don't like to start like i like to start the new year already yeah with that momentum you know i like it davis yeah. but it's, it's very it's, it's definitely deep isn't it um uh, when it comes to not not physical water now we're talking about mountains yeah but mate you're gonna you're gonna smash it uh even george saying uh, smash it Andrew, you are frozen. Is that me or you? Andrew, is that a reference to the cold water? Sure it is. Yeah. Um, Debbie, just back from EBC. Thought it was fit, but bloody hell, it was hard. <laughs> Had a cold for most of it, which didn't help. Trip of a lifetime, though. Ah, oh, Debbie. Mate, that honestly, some of those comments there is exactly Everest Base Camp, right? Thought it was fit, but bloody hard. <laughs> yeah. It is difficult, but well done, mate. Well done. It is, it is a battle, but trip of a lifetime. Exactly. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Dave, um, I think Jerome's asked. Eight day or weekender? Weekender. Well, you're doing a slightly extended version, right? Test Sli slightly extended, mm -hmm. yeah. It's more of a hybrid, really. Yeah. I'm going to be in Morocco for a week, um, but not, but more or less doing the summit in the same way that the weekender is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just having a little bit of uh, an extra day on the way down, um, just to spend a little bit more time in the mountains, really. Nice. And, um, break Can't up, wait to see some and, pictures. And break up that last day. But it was really important for me to reach the summit on the same schedule that I would have done in April. And I know that's ego and it's BS really, <laughs> but I want to prove to myself that, you know, I can, that I could do it. Yeah. Um, and actually it's kind of like a new challenge because going there, like Imlil to the refuge, refuge to a third of the way up the hill yeah. and then turning back again. It's not like bothered me by and kept me up at night, Yeah. but I feel like it's unfinished Sits business. There. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like, to me, that's mm -hmm. like, stepping out of a marathon with six miles to go you've done 20 you had six miles to go you were nearly there and for some reason yeah. i have to stop so it's like but dave you had to you, you it wasn't right yeah. it wasn't the right time yeah it wasn't the right time and now even more so it'll, it'll be so much more better when you do it yeah no that's it and yeah. it's, it, i just want to go back and i just want to complete that task that i started yeah. you know so i want to i want to reach the summit on the same schedule so we're not doing the eight day schedule to get to the summit but an extra day on the way yeah. back and then just some time in uh, in Lille and Marrakesh on the on the other side as a bit of a holiday. So right, yeah. trip prep, trip prep. <laughs> we do, we're, we're doing well today. We're doing well. I know yeah. clearly. Um, but no, trip preparation is is huge. Um, you know, any any kind of build up to a trip. You know, there's a lot of things going on. You know, mm -hmm. some people are right. You know, how how soon do I kind of finish my training? Because some people think they have to train up until the day they go, and then they start the trek tired. So first things first, go easy on the training. Mm -hmm. No more bike riding, right? um so sunday was the last take it one. easy yeah glad glad no crashes John so crashed. he did i heard about that i hope yeah, he's okay yeah. I, I saw his black and the bruised face it was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant um sorry john if john's watching i'm not laughing at your injuries but i hope you're okay mate um yeah so taper off your training that's the biggie also as well the build-up to a trip I, I kind of always get that sense of excitement around kit i don't know what it is even though i know i've got most of the kit i still want to go to cotswood outdoors or go outdoors or whatever it is tisso wherever you are just to think oh, do i need any spare socks do i need any uh, do i need that and i know mm. i don't need it i've got it already but just thinking about the bits of equipment you need so for me one thing i like to do um is just to write down every bit of equipment actually get it out if you've got a spare room or you know on your bed just basically get all your equipment out you've probably seen a lot of people on social media before they go to a trip they like to post pictures of all their equipment it's a good thing to do because you can see okay um because because weight is a biggie especially if you go into somewhere like Everest Base Camp and you know the internal flights have the the, the kind of weight limits I say limits you can get it obviously get away with it it might cost you a little bit of money but it's just to be conscious of trying to aim for that 15 kgs with, yeah. with Nepal um and you know on any of the trips really that we do run and so laying out all your equipment is actually quite good to see what you've got and what you haven't got um also as well I mean something that I quite like to do now and really, this is off the back of, of one of our good friends, Tom, is to actually put things into kind of sections. So we have like stuff, uh, little, uh, what are they called? Um, packing cubes. Packing cubes that we put like, okay, this is my 
this is my warm packing cube so i got my my woolly hat i've got my um uh, sorry beanie i've got my base layers i've got my insulated stuff all in one so i know that if i need my warm stuff i'm going into that packing cube can i uh, just correct you there okay uh apparently it was b that introduced fee? tom to trekking cubes. wow i did not packing know cubes. that he then recommended them to us and we <laughs> always give tom the credit but apparently the genesis was uh was fee. wow i'm, I'm not so sure, proud of her i'm not sure if she invented them but she was probably second to, in the world to use them i'm sticking with that okay well but she's yeah, back no, in next week right. i'll ask her i'll say did you give I will admit, and this is really really good advice and i and i like to use a packing cube yeah i have seen your bag <laughs> <laughs> do as i say not yeah, what i do yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, like, it's really good advice and please do listen to him <laughs> but andy's hey, bag hey. is controlled chaos it, i think it's evolved over the years yeah. um it's it's definitely i i wouldn't i'd say if you bumped into me on a trek or something don't go in my bag honestly it's it's chaos i know what's happening in there um but it does start off really neat when i leave the house it's in those packing cubes yeah we but we, you know things happen talk, life, about, life happens. talk about trip prep when we when me you and steve did killy and we were driving to heathrow wow yeah yeah and okay. uh, andy was like oh i need something and we were like is it in my bag and in the back of my van as we're driving he just gets his double bag like turns it upside down and i was like oh my god there's no way he's gonna like everything he needs it's is no gone. It's fine. And to be fair, you 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 got away with it. But I got I got. To I would say you, you'd have to be pretty an experienced packer to know off the top of your head what's going in there. I think you realise um, um, from years. I mean, I've backpacked a couple of times around the world. I, I kind of get used to living out of a bag. So for me, I know that okay, you have your you have your important ones. You have your passport, your wallet, your phone, things that you can kind of generally work out everything else. And you know, okay, now I think. I got those three things now the other important things for me are my boots so i make sure i wear my boots so they don't go in that bag these are the ones i'm going to be trekking with i've also got my big down jacket on so i've always got that everything else i can find mm. you had your down you jacket on yesterday i know it was cold yeah it was it's pretty nipply yesterday rebecca uh sorry sophie hurst said yeah. she was dancing all day sunday really my legs are broken after oh wow was there like a big World Cup game on Sunday or something? Uh, I don't know. There's a big one today. Maybe she was dancing because she wanted to go on another trek. Wales, England. Today. <laughs> it is. I know. Wales, England later. Oh, um, Wales, good. good luck. We're going to do really well, aren't we? Um, because we played so, so well. I'm with... very proud Welshman, but I think we're going to struggle later. But we'll uh, we'll we'll see. But good luck to England. Good luck to Wales. Wherever happens, happens. Is that profound? No, but it reminded me of something. Okay. I'm not. I won't say it on the live because it's, it's a bit dark. Okay. Um, um, brilliant. But no, I it, hope it, everyone's enjoying the World yeah. Cup. There's a, if you want to know, oh, Sophie went to a rave quality. Wow. Love that that, that's, Love that sounds brilliant. Um, we need to go to a rave. Yeah. Out, outside online podcast, there's an episode called Whatever Happens, Happens. Give it a listen. Really? Is it good? It is good, yeah. Okay. It's a good reminder as to why you should never do like sort of base jumping or anything like that. Oh, okay. It's quite dark. But yeah. Talk about outside online. Sorry, and again, this is this is definitely a tangent one, right? Um outside online did that uh remember that was it plane crash on Mount Ilamani in Bolivia? Oh brilliant, brilliant one. Brilliant. It's, it's split over brilliant. a couple of episodes, highly recommended. Those of like, weird snake skins everywhere. Yeah. It's quite it, yeah, this missing plane that they found. It was um quite dark though and quite uh, moving in a lot of ways yeah because it hadn't been found before and obviously yeah. there were no survivors but also someone was smuggling snake skins on there and they apparently... well, i think there was some cartel or something like that it was, it was a crazy story but a great listen yeah if, if, if you fancy um yeah outside online they're very good we, we get a lot of podcast inspiration from from outside online yeah yeah um, really good they are brilliant but yeah so going back we'll drive that car, drive that vehicle back into trip prep so yeah we've, we've got all our gear even if um we're going to a rave you know maybe the rave's finished we're gone home we're packing great even with tired legs um then we're looking at kind of okay what kind of the surrounding stuff that we take because i think over the years in the beginning i think i went out there with with a lot of stuff like i took god knows how many packs of haribo mm -hmm. god knows how many um, of those energy gels mm -hmm. um that we used to take loads of sweets loads of snacks and then actually you realize maybe that's the extra three or four kilos that actually i took because I didn't use half of it. Yeah, no, honestly, you know? I, I'm always a big believer. And we know what I get, I speak to a lot of people and yeah. it's nobody's fault. And largely it's a little bit of just lack of experience where people say, I can't, you can't get your bag to 15 kilos. It can't be done. It yeah. absolutely can. I packed mine yesterday and it was just over 15 kilos. And I included yeah. some crap that I'm not going to take on the hill with me. <laughs> 
Um, and that's, and I know that's for a shorter Tupacal trip, yeah. but everything that's in the bag, I looked at it and I was like, pretty much like, so what happened on Tupacal, because it's going to be snow, I've got my, my, I've got my B2 boots in the bag, yeah. and I'm wearing my hiking boots. Well, I think they're like nearly three kilos probably, like take those out. And I put an extra couple of pairs, like I could easily make that 15 kilos in the EDC trip. Yeah. But you are absolutely right. There's a lot of like ancillary stuff. For me, it's all about the healthcare as well. Like you've yeah. seen my medicine bag. Oh yeah. I pretty much rattle. As a pharmacy when I'm, on when wheels. I'm, yeah. But you know what? How many people do I supply on the hill? It's true. You know, it, like it's not all for me. I take it for the, I, I don't know why, but we've like fallen into that role where, yeah. you know, if, if it's late at night, and, no uh, I, I'm the guy you call in the early hours if you need a paracetamol, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, like uh, Jeez, you know, like, but but it is that, like, so my medicine bag, and it's not just like you know, you you've got the what I call the super mighty pills, which is the ibuprofen and paracetamol combination. Okay. They're really good, I yeah, think, yeah. for altitude because they just cure everything. <laughs> um, but also, you know, just things like the hydration salts. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, the diarrhea kit, stuff like that. Brad Pitt um, kit. The Brad Pitt kit. There's all of that sort of stuff that I kind of that I tend to take because, yeah. to me. If I forget my snacks, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. If I forget, you know, a beanie, it's not even the end of the world. I can borrow one. But there's a few things I, I think, what are the trip enders? You know, what's right. the stuff that's going to send me back down the hill? Right. And I was thinking about, well, sickness and diarrhea. That's the first that's one. Yeah, yeah. You know, the big so, things, yeah, from getting so, ill. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What am I going to need to stop something happening that's going to turn me around? And sickness and diarrhea is one of them. <laughs> Physical injury is another one, so I carry a lot of zinc oxide tape, compedes, because uh, I know it sounds, Bastards. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I've seen people turn around because their boots are chewing their feet to pieces, yeah, yeah. and you kind of don't want to underestimate what completely wearing away at a foot can do. It can be like debilitating. I love what Sophie's named you, Dave the Mountain Pharmacist. You sound a bit like you should be on Breaking Bad or something. There's gonna, like... Joe, that sounds like a Netflix documentary, doesn't it? <laughs> like, you know. That, that, that's watchable. That is watchable, that is Dave. Yeah, what can I say? You can take the boy out of Newport. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I love, just reading, um, uh, Just re I took 14 kgs of Haribo and some underpants from Jerome. And then, and then Bri, why did you waste a kg on underpants? That is brilliant genius pillow trip stopper i like that <laughs> and that's a good one it like yeah. trip stoppers what are we going to do with trip stoppers but that's what i think that's that's the first thing on my mind is yeah. passport that's a trip stopper right at the very yes. beginning and you wouldn't believe how many times i've lost my passport it's insane <laughs> but a pillow in sleep is so important i know I, i'm I, I love my sleep you know what i do though your bag i use my um no the the stuff sack my sleeping bag yeah, and put all your clothes and in i there. put my down yeah, jacket good, in there so good, i stuff my clothes and down jacket in there and i, I sleep improvised on pillow why in, not an improvised pillow um or always works always works yeah, yeah but it's but without it yeah it's a nightmare like the other way is yeah. i put your duffel bag behind your head because i like to kind of pop up yeah um you sleep quite upright don't you yeah yeah so it's really that's really good otherwise it's snoring central um anyway but the guys are going to love that this weekend <laughs> Yeah, Zach, Zach's got a whole. Zach and Jen are gonna love your story. Uh, especially with, look, this. This is the best my sinuses are right now. This is me breathing. <laughs> wow, it just Dave. totally blocked. That is clarity right there. Um, so steering it back into trip prep. Yeah. Um, so we've okay. So we've gone on. Okay, last bits of equipment that we need. We've got some snacks. Yeah. Got to manage the weight. Got it all prepped. When does the? Because I, I I get quite excited in the build up to a trip. When yeah. does when does it really start for you? Is it? When you finish packing, you put it in your car. Is it when you parked at the airport drop off? You drop the car and you get to the airport. You, you checked in. You have your first point. Does it start then? Does it start when you land? We, does we it start when you start the trek. When does it start for you? I know we might have talked about this. Before. There's a couple of different buzz points for me. Mm. When I'm packing my bag, it gets real. Because mm -hmm. that's, I do that. I tend to do it the week I go. Yeah. Oh. It gets real. Because no. I'm going to use this stuff on the mountain. Yeah, yeah. And it's great because there's a few things I only ever take on trips with me. You know, so when I open yeah. uh, when I open that trip drawer in my wardrobe and I'm like, it's like, I feel like I'm looking at my weapons. As a, you know, and I'm like, Is that a pharmacy? And I, yeah, you, well, <laughs> yeah, you are right. It's like my, literally, I have my, you know, my medicine bag that I take on my treks. Yeah. You know, and then there's like a few other little things like there's baseball caps I only wear on treks and the shamak that I put around my neck and stuff. Oh, coffees. Wow. Oh. Oh. Thanks, mate. You are that mine? Yeah. And um, <laughs> there's a few things that, like, my, Thank my you. The, you know, my uh, my everyday carries when I'm on my trek. Yeah. And when I'm putting them in the bag, I'm like, yeah, 
now it gets real then it kind of goes away a little bit yeah and then for me i know you love the traveling us for you i think the trek begins i think you get mega excited the day of like heading to the airport putting it putting your bag in the I car think, um, yeah just because for me there's so much sometimes like obviously you know evertrek takes up a lot of time you know we're so into the business which is awesome so sometimes you can't really step away until right it's done now my work is done right let's, let's get into expedition mode so for me it starts yeah it's probably on the way to the airport but i think really it's when you you, you check in you your bags you put it on the conveyor belt off it goes get scanned by the person there um you know scan your bag you go up you go through security you've got your backpack on you, you sit down with with your mates or wherever you're going with and and you have your first beer that that's when it starts for me you see for me it's I, just i love that i in, <laughs> i don't particularly enjoy airport travel why I, so much so much do, love do, do, positivity do, happens in in airports yeah but you see that, <laughs> that that's with the andy glasses on okay i see delays <laughs> i see colds okay i see people sleeping on hard metal chairs yeah i just don't like airport travel because okay. i see queuing is the biggest issue i have you see queuing queuing but for me the biggest i always get a buzz when i walk off the plane in the new country so so that when you step on when you when land. when i step yeah, onto the new land there's exciting a, there's always i don't know what it is right but yeah and i think nepal is where i get this the most and maybe everybody will know right that there's something about when i get off the plane at the airport tribuban airport in Kathmandu, there's like an incense smell it's the smell yeah, of nepal that's that's true actually. there's this yeah, yeah. sweet incense that i get <clears throat> and every time i walk off I get the same smell so when i go to a new country yeah i'm always like i don't know why but i'm keen to know what the smell is you know and then when i as soon as i walk off and it's it's great if you get off get to walk across the tarmac and stuff so when i get off the plane foot on a new land and i can smell the country and then i think for me that's it mate yeah that that i am here the before smell. here i was only ever at home you know but now i'm in a completely different country a different land culture experience people smells tastes everything See, isn't, it, isn't it wonderful and uh even bra you can't go on a trip without taking an anchor with you let's be careful how you say that because, because <laughs> isn't it bry i can yeah. see why bry dropped that in but have you got your anchor with you uh i've got three you've got three anchors oh uh, well, actually seven days actually it was two anchors and a um and a different one different rav power rav power that power are pretty good. The the, the only reason I brought the RAF home <laughs> trip around airport smells of diesel. I was gonna say it's it's, it's very diesely, definitely. Yeah. Not to me. I get that smell of the incense. Really? Qatar, yeah, yeah. on the other hand, when we land at Doha, that smells like a sauna. It does I actually. Don't know how yeah, the plane I think it's a bit of just a just I don't, a know, heat. That's a bit. don't know how the don't know how the boys are playing. I got off there. the plane one time and mm. I said to you, went, Christ, that engine's hot. Yeah, yeah. And he went, it's not the engine. <laughs> that's the air. That's yeah, the, that's the air. air. I've yeah, never yeah. Yeah ever in my life experienced heat like a it's hot crazy, day yeah. in Qatar mm. it was boggling the mind yeah it's pretty, pretty um, warm but yeah no I've got three, yeah but it's, it's not just for me is it you know other people yeah. want to use them and um Qatar Airlines and also I've, I've got my GoPros and stuff so I plan on yep. doing um some you get some footage charging. yeah I'm gonna do some footage I'm gonna do a video diary I think nice I've got, some, I've got some grand ideas I want to see some videos on the summit. I'm going to do some videos. Yeah, I'm going to do your video on the summit. 100%. Good man. Good man. Oh, do you know what I need to borrow off you, man? I don't know if you've got one here. I need to borrow a hip flask. I'm sure I got it. Because I'm um, sure I got one or two. I can check. You know, it's, it's, it's like a. <laughs> I'll make sure there's something in it. One of the things, um, and I said this the other day, I was like, do you know, one of the reasons why I believe I didn't make the summit, I didn't bring a hip flask and a little uh, and a oh, little shot. So the, the mountain knew, and the mountain said, Dave, not today, my friend. Was that was that the, the energy wasn't right? Yeah, the yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. You Is know, what it was? weirdly. <laughs> weirdly i'm not the most spiritual person but i'm a big believer in things like my uh my chi and my feng shui like i have to be in a nice. certain place in the office i have to have things around me that inspire me and that time i felt like do you know what i wasn't ready to celebrate the mountain allowing me to step on her head oh well, i had one on me you could have had mine yeah but i didn't yeah that's fair you okay. know and i didn't and it was like do you know what dave you haven't come here prepared. i want to see one with your hip flask on the summit of two cal this weekend yeah okay good man you're gonna do it right steering it back in trip prep um yes bry trek starts the bar good man my uh, man after my own heart um so we we talked about a few things we we, we waded into see i'm waded see yeah. what i did there um into tech because we yeah. talked about power banks what other kind of bits of tech do you like to, to kind of take well on? we also said the gopro 
the GoPro. Really important. No, most of the Any time, I borrow my GoPro stuff to other people. I don't, I'm yeah. not the one in control of the camera. Um, but in terms of tech, does a head torch? Head torch. Don't forget I, that. I actually had to buy a new one. Really? What'd yeah. you get? Uh, Petzl. Petzl. Um, Tika. Core. Petzl Core. Nice. Um, Tika. It's a bit expensive, but it's not. It's not the price. It's the weight. They are quite front heavy, it's aren't quite, they? Quite they're good. Yeah, they've so got to be. They got to. Yeah. To me, like the, the one I got, I think is the core, and I think it's four hundred and fifty lumens more than adequate. Yeah, it's really light. It's re it has a little rechargeable pack, um, or which you can take out and charge directly. Yeah, or you just put batteries in there. For me, it's great. Don't need to spend vast amounts on a head torch. No, but obviously um, on on big summits like you know Tupcal, Kili, you know Kalapatar, where you're going to be hiking in the dark. Important to have a good one. Take some spare batteries as well, yeah. or at least have it fully charged, um, especially on Killy because you're, you're you're hiking through the night for like over eight hours. Yeah, I always um, do. Yeah. Especially for the cold, it can sap the energy yeah. out of that. You know, spare batteries. I think that would come under tech as well. Quite yeah. important. And do you know what? I'm getting into my old school tech right now. I'm trying to take things, trying to strip things back to basics. Okay. Um, last school week, tech. I think I talked about um, Zach's leather journal that he kept on there. That is awesome. Well, I've ordered yeah. myself one. I'm also going to buy one when I get to the souks. Nice. Um, and, yeah, I've that'd decided, be good. and I've decided to start this because uh, I'm in a lot of ways, right? I love my tech. I love yeah. the most modern mountain bikes I can get. I'm, I love everything. But in other ways, you know, I'm a bit hopeless. Like, I don't really understand cameras. Yeah. I'm not very good with like software on laptops and things like that. And I, I've never owned a Kindle, although I think they're an amazing device and I want to love them. But I love the feel of a book. And the, the, the ergonomic the texture of the of paper and stuff like that. To me, it's more it's more to it than just reading off a screen. I like the book. Nice. And you can make notes on it and things like that. I love I love a good book that you see where the spines all broke. There's notes made throughout yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's yeah, stuff that's, like that. That's been on a journey that book. So yeah, that's like that. that. That's, okay. old, that's old school tech. That's so so. old school tech. And and with with snacks then. So because literally, I'm I'm literally reading off a list here. It's yeah. pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's it's like we've got notes. Um, so we talked about tech snacks. What what snacks are you gonna take with you? Uh, I'm gonna take some beef jerky. Okay, nice. Keep, um, keep the protein up. Keep the protein up. I yeah. like, you know, I am a meat eater. Yeah. Um, I recently had a, a a renewed approach to my meat eating. I'm, okay. You know, I'm not I'm not just eating any old meat these days. And well, I'm trying stuff. trying good to stuff. just stick to all the good stuff and you know, um. Yeah, anyway, we'll get into the meat okay. eating debate. Anything but else anyway, over the meat? Yeah, exactly. Any uh, other snacks? Yeah. What are uh, snacks? Jelly babies. Jelly babies, love it. Yeah. Um, I used to bring Tangtastics, but I've stopped bringing them now because they're a bit they're a bit much. Like After you've had like a pack of them, yeah, you yeah. can't just keep eating them. They'll, your tongue gets sore. Jelly babies, on the other hand, <laughs> I could literally eat like a handful at a time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my go-to snacks are going to be jelly babies, and I'm going to get the... Um, beef jerky that's more for like a end of day snack you know sitting nice. down having a bit of meat um that's pretty much all pretty I much am, it you're gonna take it. really I'm, okay. not, I'm, I'm not a massive... any nuts kind of any of that no. kind of stuff or we'll just get it out there nah just get it just, just get it out there like I, I tend to like wine gums love it oh, i love a good yeah, wine gum. one of my favorite sweets jerome he's got he's got a good point there yeah well well jerome is well stocked you know he may may have a lot of rocks but he's also got a lot of sweets yeah. wine gums you know haribos he's, he's clearly he's, he's a man to follow yeah no yeah he is good yeah he like you know, <laughs> um brilliant um yeah, yeah so yeah i'm not i'm not a big uh i'm not massive on the snacks i tend just to get okay. what i get what i get when i'm there and i like to try and indulge you know in what the locals are doing and stuff like that although i'll be honest with you i'm not the mushroom jerky i've never tried that mushroom jerky yeah, James mentioned it. yeah that's a Give it a go, Dave. Do you know what? I've tried salmon jerky the other day. Okay. And if anyone offers it to me again, a fight might break out. <laughs> Was it that enjoyable? I not for me. <laughs> not my cup of tea. Brilliant. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I like to try and um, change things up. But the biggest thing for me, more than the food aspect, because I'll eat anything. Yeah. You know, I'll eat anything on a trek. I'm not a huge yeah. tagine fan, which is an issue in Morocco. But um, they are, they're lovely though. I mean, if if anyone's going to Tupcal or has been to Morocco. The tagines are amazing. Yeah, I'm not. I'm vegetable not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not disputing that, but there's something about it that I just. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Really? I, just, I just can't. You, you can't know, maybe, maybe it's because the last time I went, I wasn't very well. Honestly, I think that's haunted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think that's it. It's in your mind. I wasn't very well, and all I was eating was tagines. So all I yeah. felt when I ate them was unwell. So yeah. I might 
let's uh, let's talk about this in a week okay. time or something, and we'll see we'll see next week. Yeah. Next week when you actually, when you're back. Uh, well, actually, that's a good point. Actually, I'll be in Morocco next week. Ah, we got a government. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. fine. So I could I could maybe join you from Morocco. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll Never we'll plan these we, things. We got a, a, we got a plan for next week. We we got a we got a plan. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. Our Nepalese counterparts didn't like the sauna. So yeah, they are quite strong. Because I remember uh, going to Everest with with Stevie B. Yeah. Um and uh, what was that? November eighteen. He's, he's like mad for them. Isn't he? he loves those sweets. And yeah, they are a bit sour for me. I prefer jelly beans, jelly beans, jelly babies. Um, jelly beans are good. Wine gums. Oh, like that. who was that that had those energy jelly beans? Oh, Papatembo. Papatembo. Yeah, yeah. James. He had these really like. He, the, he the, did on Killy. They're like yeah. this little thing, and they're like Brilliant. apparently they're like uh, magic beans. Oh, Snickers. Love it. Do you know what, though? You know what's interesting? I've recently changed them. I'm more of a Mars bar man. Really? Never never been well, a Mars bar man my whole life, but for some reason... Now you've switched. A Mars a day keep, well, helps you work. Keeps out to the day, right? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but, uh, yeah, what I was getting at, the more important thing for me is the water. Okay. I have yeah. to make a drink water because I do get bored drinking four or five litres of yeah. plain water a day. So yeah. I always go and get me little squash, Yeah. Um, little Robinson squash. I tend to go for the apple and black currant one. Okay. A little bit of a mix. Um, and you squirt that in your bladder. It stings your bladder. Your bladder will forever taste a bit, but I don't care because all I ever use it for is squash. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. Also, I've bought a three-litre bladder this time. Nice. Um, Good man. Because I know you were a bit light on the water last time. I was a bit you? light on the water last time. Yeah. Um, well, I made a deliberate choice. I've got, I had the three-litre and the litre and a half. Yeah. And for some reason, I decided I'm going to take the litre and a half one so I'm not overloading. Yeah. And it wasn't enough. And I think that contributed to um being sort of heat exhausted and stuff like that so yeah nice um alan king nut bars brought in the soups kept me going alan congratulations on reaching the summit i saw your pictures look fantastic um oh and turkish delight i like to bring a couple of turkish, turkish delight bars delight. your brain's still going on that, yeah yeah it? i i because i knew there was something i always bring about four turkish delight bars <laughs> I don't eat them normally, but for some reason, <coughs> when I'm tracking, is uh, something I something I like. Brilliant. Um, yeah, some some good some good comments on there around around snacks. There's lots of comments. There was a question here, Dave, because I want to bring it back to equipment um, because we had a question which was around boots. Although I feel like the question mm. was just playing on the. <laughs> On the, the 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 bingo that goes on when people watch the Tuesday tune in, what type of boots would you recommend, Dave? Uh, <laughs> I'd actually recommend the uh, Mendel. Um, what are they called? What's that? I can't remember their name. Oh, I've forgotten. Eh? I, I've literally forgotten their name. Do you know what? Um, and talk about the boots that you wear for a second. <laughs> well, I wear Mendel Boutans, Dave, but I yeah. don't know about that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I'm only joking. No, I've just seen Anthony reply. Um, yeah, Anthony, have you been around the? Is this your first Tuesday tune in, or have you been on many before? Um, yeah, we do like to discuss Mainal Bhutan's. It's been on probably over the last hundred or so episodes. Um, Mainal, yeah. I've changed. Oh, are these the new ones you use? Yeah, well, ah, I nice. actually, I've again, because I'm a degenerate, I've gone and bought too much. However, yeah. what I did was, I always have thought that the Mainals yeah. were a little bit tight. Not too tight, but a yeah. little bit tight. And then recently, I don't know what's happened, but I went to put them on for a hike and I thought, it's the first time ever where I think they're too tight. Yeah, they wouldn't rub in, they weren't causing a blister, but I just noticed it. So I decided to get uh, a pair of boots from their comfort range. And when I went on the website, the equivalent in their comfort range yeah. is called the Adamellos. Nice. And I bought them, and they arrived, and they're great. They're also massive yeah. and heavy. Moon boots. Moon boots. They're, they're and quite I was like, substantial. Aren't I they? thought these would be pretty good for like winter hiking. Yeah. You know, through the Breton beacons and snow and stuff like that. But they're not really day to day stuff. Right. So what I did was I ordered a pair of Mendel Tonales. I think that's what they're called. Yeah, very I nice. Really get a good T-O-N-A-L-A. picture of it. And as you can see, though, though, those ones there, they're pretty good. And I'll be honest with you, that it's they're really light. Yeah. Really comfortable. Um, I put the Superfeet Trailblazers in them. Um, because the, nice the, one, now, yeah. the ones that came with them are garbage. Um, but yeah, they were really good. Nice. Um, yeah, it's great to see someone on their first time. Anthony, wow. I feel like this is the first one because I think we've done about probably over 130 episodes now of the Tuesday tune in uh, since very early doors in mm. the lockdown journey in 2020. Um, yeah, we've got we we do discuss a lot of boots, a lot of different ones, different times, but Mendel's just always seem to come out on top. 
probably because we've used them the mountain so many times. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's obviously so many makes, and definitely, as you said, there get to um, you know, if you are looking at new boots, definitely go and get them fitted out. Obviously, part of the community now, mate. Um, you know, we and if you are booked on with Evertrek, um, you do get some discounts as well from Cotswold Outdoors. So yeah, definitely get get on that as well. David Cliff, welcome. Finally, David's arrived. Um, yeah, hope all is well, Dave. After your yeah, not bad journey. Very good. <laughs> uh, after your journey earlier this year with the group, and um, yeah, great to see uh, see you on the live. Um, so yeah, regarding trip prep, then obviously we we we've talked about specifics that you're going to pack. Yeah. But in terms of specifics that you need to do, because I know something that some people forget to sort is their insurance before they go. Yeah. For big, example. Yeah, definitely a biggie. Yeah. Um, sorted mine last week. Nice. I, I like that's, that's organized. Yeah. That's organized. Yeah. It's pretty. pretty yeah. Usually it's, it's at the airport. The first, well, the first <laughs> time I ever did EBC, I did it the night before we flew to Ludlow. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, but I actually recommend getting it a little bit beforehand because yeah, it doesn't just yeah. cover for things that happen when you're actually on the trek. It covers you for yeah. things like you know flight disruptions and and things like that. So you want to like it covers you for a bit of stuff that might happen before the trip as well. Yeah. So it's worth getting. Um, but yeah, and I went on to True Traveler. Um, uh, there's also other uh, companies. Um, the Campbell Irving. Campbell Irving, Big Cat. There's a few Big others. Cat. But uh, I use True Traveler. The MC be really good if you're part yeah, of their membership. Um, they're they're you know really helpful, informative guys. Yeah. And when you go on their website, you there's set there's different types of packs that you like. You know you've got the adventure pack, the extreme pack, yeah. and it covers you for different types of things. Excuse um, me. But one thing you can do is there's a little type box where you can put in what you're doing, and it will double check the policy you've selected nice. is covered. Okay. Um, I that's was good. that's I, really good. That's I was really certain handy. anyway because obviously yeah, yeah. because I'm I'm quite anal about these things and I read all the detail. Yeah. But I put it in just to see if it worked and it comes up green. Yeah. Make two cal when you've selected it works. Nice. So yeah, really good. Well, there's pl plenty of good insurance companies out there. I mean, obviously very important as Dave said. You know, sometimes you can leave it kind of last minute, but it's good to to kind of you know to get those in time before your trip. Um, Definitely. Um, one thing just before we, we kind of crack on, because we, we've had a lot of questions come in as well. Uh, obviously, Evertrek are um, uh, running a crowdfunding equity round at the moment. Um, we've had a bunch of questions off the back of it. So anyone that's on the live that is um, wants to invest in Evertrek, I know if you've seen that in the in the private group uh, and on the Facebook page, obviously went public yesterday. Um, I think we're like 85, so we're 85 percent now of our target, which is awesome. Um, any questions you have off the back of it that's what we're here for as well so any uh, evertrek investor questions do drop them in obviously any questions about the trips do also drop them in as well because that's what we're here for and whilst we're talking about kind of announcements of things going to the british travel awards tonight you're going to the water in london yeah so yeah so thanks to everyone that's uh, voted oh, yeah huge. now it's just a matter of um it's just a formality right we're just gonna go there and pick up the pick up the first pick up the first prize yeah? <laughs> i don't think it's like that do you get like a uh, rosette no I, I i don't know um but we yeah just wanted to let everyone know that we will um let you know oh i think we put up the wrong link there okay here's the link to register your interest i think we they're coming soon one get rid of that one whoever's posting that one on there um just the the evertrek one but yeah the link if you are keen to invest is on there and capital is at risk of course mm. um yeah with the the british travel awards this is huge for us because it's voted for by the public um and yeah we found out that we are into the final three. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. We'll, we'll let everyone know by tomorrow. No, it's Evertrek and two other companies don't really need to know about. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's going to be great. Anyway, yeah. first travel awards we've been to, first British travel awards, and they're the largest uh, it's consumer first voted. Travel awards we've been, no, it's travel awards, yeah. What was the one that I won? That was the uh, that was the Welsh Business Awards, where we won the customer Welsh Business. business. Because we're a Welsh business, yeah, and we won. Well, we're UK business, but we we did. We know, won the, the customer commitment award. We did. Yeah, I got to meet Which a celebrity, did but you? I didn't know until afterwards. What was it? What was their name? This Gethin. Gethin. I think he did Blue Peter or something. Okay, interesting. I didn't know. I thought he was just the, uh, you know, the the guy so who someone. speaks on the mic. Well, hopefully, I mean, we may meet someone tonight. We'll see how it goes. But we'll let everyone everyone know. Um, yeah, and yeah, thanks for uh, thanks, Sophie. Yeah, it's, it's going to mean. You know, fingers crossed uh, mean a lot to us to, to win any form of award, especially because it's voted for by the public and not by, you know, a panel. Um, you know, so it is it is great that our community has voted for us, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. David Cliff, regarding the shares, if in a later time you want to sell them, how do you go about that? So, yeah, there's um, actually a uh, marketing, uh, sorry, marketing exchange on Cedars. So we use Cedars and you're able to buy and sell shares on their marketplace. So 
our shares as such for Evertrack will be listed on their platform. And then you're able to sell them at a date. I think they do it like twice a week. You're able to sell. Um, yeah, definitely get on there. It's um, it's a great platform. Uh, we've obviously decided there's there's many platforms, but Cedars is one of the largest in the world. Um, and it's great that obviously we, we were now on there. So yeah, if you did invest yeah. and um, obviously for yourself, you wanted to, um, uh, you know, exit as such, um, you are able to, to sell them on the exchange. You know what the um, great thing is about Cedars? Whenever you invest, they always tell you your capital's at risk. Um, <laughs> is that what's great about them? That's right? always great okay. about them, yeah. Because you're never under the illusion that your capital's not at risk <laughs> when you're investing. Brilliant. Honestly, it's um, no, it is is really good. They're, they're a wonderful platform. Uh, yeah, I hope that helps, David. Um, yeah, we're we're leaving the gates open uh, until the fifth of December because we we're hoping to by that time we we've obviously reached our target. Um, yeah, and we want to kind of close the gates on that. We obviously raised uh, a lot through uh, private investors, which has been amazing. Um, but a big part of it for us is getting as many ever trackers as, 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 as part yeah. of that, you know, because you can you can um, you can fund as a minimum of 10 pound all the way up to whatever you you want to invest. So um, yeah, it's great just to have people on board with that. And obviously, I know it's a crazy time of year with Christmas and everything. But um, yeah, if you want to be an ever track investor, there are some perks as yeah. well. I just definitely check out the, and, um, the link. We really want that ever yacht um so it's important that we get as many yachts. investors as, <laughs> as we can and um but it's funny you ask about what we're going to spend it on yeah what we're going to spend it on so a big part of it actually is, is not is, the yacht is not the we yacht. scrapped that idea no we, we can't we've we got to go away from the water okay we're going to mountains the higher areas the higher areas okay nice um so we are essentially open up lots of new trips if you've been part of the community for a while um yeah definitely uh, there's a lot of countries that we're looking to open up new trips Scandinavia, North America, the polar regions. We want to start doing higher peaks. So for us, it's an ability to, to open up new trips, um, which is is going to be huge for us, as well as that, obviously, What's on your new systems. List? Oh, wow, mate, that's but, a big one. What One place you could go that we don't go now, where would you go? Antarctica. Really? Yeah, big time. I think it's, yeah, just, just because of the stories and the challenge. See, the it's, challenge. In, it's interesting, because I think if you ask me, where would you go? Arctic. <laughs> there we go then well you could be the polar bear i'll be the penguin yeah do you, do you, honestly, that's where i want to go i want to see polar bears is that what it is yeah but you bought you got, got you got uh snow leopards it's not, not snow leopards oh, leopard seals leopard seals i was gonna say there's leopard no snow seals. leopards down no, there but there are leopards they're in seals. the himalayas ferocious things those leopard seals yeah they are um do you know where arctic and antarctic do you know where that came from i think it's just a qi thing it's bear it's bear isn't it it's bear once it's there's no off. bears uh arctoc i think arctoc it was the old greek word for bear really and then i think arctoc and uh, antarctic is like okay. candy, no bears like no bears yeah yeah honestly antarctica has been on my bucket list for years and i think i'd like to do i don't want to just go there though you know and touch i want to track and experience it and climb I, I i think there'd be some um absolutely awesome um challenges down there so for us yeah that's going to be part of the um obviously using that money to to, to create new trips yeah it's going to be fantastic. Jerome wants us to go to Mars. Uh, Largest thought, mountain ever. Yeah. Olympus Mons. Olympus Mons. That is uh, more, yeah, it's, it's, it's big. I think you need substantial acclimatization to get up there. Well, no, because there's no oxygen anywhere. That's true, actually. Uh, you'll have 100% oxygen because you'll be in your spacesuit, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Why don't they do that on Everest, do you think? I think it's because they're very heavy and bulky. Yeah, imagine that. Um, and also, if there is a failure with your spacesuit, you're screwed absolutely screwed yeah you are because you're going from a state of pure oxygen to about a third on the summit which is where it'll break these things never break at base camp they don't. <laughs> you know? that is true do you know what i watched um, the other day okay i'm gonna tangent us onto the road. i was gonna say wow mate this is first this time ever i watched tangents. it i don't know how i missed this uh it was called the um the alpinist oh it's brilliant amazing oh was it uh Incredible. mark uh i forgot his name it, it's quite a sad story though isn't it very sad yeah but but, but moving and just yeah the, the stuff that that guy did he's a he's an amazing climber is it a Canadian was it mark guy? anthony mark anthony dupont it's, it's a french name oh do you know it? what this is, um, this is this is i'm gonna look it up so we don't do him a disservice i know it's sad but he yeah basically um some guy who not really looking for awards or any of that as we're talking about awards and recognition mark andre leclerc yeah but it was actually an amazing climber oh great I, highly I don't, recommend I don't, it. I don't, it's been on my list of things to kind yeah. of catch up with and then the other day uh i was like oh, i'm gonna put it on and watch it and i watched it and i was like the stuff that that guy did yeah the solo in 
of and that he just, main gym. He'd just walk and just do it as well. Like he, and oh. he wouldn't record it or tell anyone about it. He'd just come and say, yeah, I've done it now. What's up? <laughs> right, but I used to drive to the Arctic Circle every year for three months of the year. It's brilliant. How do we not know that about it? I know. Right, we, we need to sit down with this, this beer at the airport is, is this discuss in your, these things. Is this in your prior career? <laughs> I think it was. Um, I know uh, uh, Bry is... Um, I'm going to label a squaddy. Was he a squaddy? Tamdor, wasn't that? Tam I know. That's, that's it. I'm sure Bry doesn't like the term either. Yeah, I don't know. Do, 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 do soldiers <laughs> like the term squaddy? Or is I that, don't know. Or is that something a civvy says? Is that probably it? something a civvy would say? Tam doesn't like it. He likes soldier. He does. Yeah. He's a soldier. Um, anyway, I feel like they, they definitely we, we, we decided we'd do trip prep. We've talked about 17 other subjects on this live. Listen, trip prep doesn't always go straight. That's true. You know, sometimes that is very sometimes true, on trip prep you can uh, you know you can be in the middle of prepping for a climb to Tupacal, yeah, and your knee will completely explode, and then before you know it, you've got to diverge and do several other things. What's um? Sorry, just I got a question here as well, just coming in. Uh, I think it's from Anthony. Um, I'll be booked on soon. I'm ready now, but my mate wants to wait until after the Scottish winter climbing trip. I'm nervous. If I book now, what's the chance of him not getting booked on with me? Yeah, I'd say. Um, Anthony, it depends on, on which trip are you looking to, to book into because definitely depends on when because I know the spring, early next year, obviously some of those trips are getting sold out now. Um, generally, what we're able to do is, you know, we don't like anyone being left out. And, you know, if, we're not massively strict. Like, we, we don't want them to, trips to be huge. You know, if we've got 12 people on a trip and then someone says, oh, look, can my mate join at the last minute? We won't say no. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, people are able to go with their friends and things. Obviously, if it was a massive group of people, we'd probably have to maybe build a different type of trip. Um, obviously, there's there's additional costs with that. But yeah, if if your mate is obviously wants to wait until after, that's fine. Um, it's good to get something in the diary, certainly to, to work towards. Uh, but definitely let us know, and we can get we can get your mate kind of penciled in if if that if that makes sense. And um, you know, if, if but if he doesn't go, you're going to meet lots of new people anyway. Just yeah. to put that out there, you're never on your own. Um, you know, a big part of these trips, and I'd say over half of the people who book on to Evertrek trips are actually solo travellers. So you get to meet, you know, new people who are clearly, clearly looking to push themselves out of their comfort zone, trying new things, and one of those things is going on your own if it comes to it. Hopefully not. Hopefully your mate wants to go. Um, but yeah, just just thought I'd kind of drop that in. Um, but yeah, Anthony, thanks for for joining the community. It's always nice to have new Evertrekkers um, on the Tuesday tune in. Yeah. Definitely. Welcome to the community, my friend. See you next Tuesday. Well, actually, I will. Yeah. I almost said it. <laughs> oh, shit, um, I didn't even that. <laughs> I know it's kind of it's it's, it's going to become like a, a, a colloquial way of saying that, right? Um, brilliant. But yeah, Dave. I mean, so we've got a few minutes left. Yeah. Trip preparation. What have you got left to do before you go? Uh, there is something that was on my list that I got to do before I go. Okay. Um, Are we allowed to talk about it on the line? Yeah, I was going to charge my. I was going to charge my. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't, couldn't resist. Me, I'm going to um, charge my GoPro batteries. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go and get that squash that I spoke so fondly of. Um, and then pretty much I'm just going to. The biggest thing that I always do is like, no matter how many yeah. times I go on a trip, I always make a list. You check it twice. Uh, of the, I've checked it twice, and twice the, of, uh, it'll always be like the trip stoppers on there. Yeah. Um, and some other stuff that just keeps me and then i'll double check that list before i go yeah because i have forgotten things in the past that i hadn't known i've forgotten um yeah other than that it's just charging batteries my own included and um batteries included or? batteries included that's a great movie i know that's great definitely from the 80s there yeah. um lorna asked a good question actually Are solar charges any good we had this a couple of weeks ago and it's actually um something that yeah, there's so many different, like if you went on Amazon and, and typed in solar charger, you know, or battery pack solar charger, they're not very good, if I'm honest. Um, having used a few different ones myself, Lorna, I highly recommend you stick to normal power banks and charge them up where you can. Um, just because they're, unless you spend big money on solar chargers, they're not very good. They take a long time to charge. Um, although they're, they're quite light, um, just the functionality, in my experience, hasn't worked that well. Yeah. Um, I, I do see people on the treks use them, like I, on Everest Base Camp. For me, I think they're good if you're going to be camping in one space for a while. Okay. You know, yeah, because yeah, you, can, that's, put, that's good, you yeah. can put them out in the sun, leave them and forget about them. Yeah. But when you're trekking, particularly in the high mountains, you're always going to be in and around. Like sometimes you've got baking sun on you, but a lot of the yeah. time there's some cloud cover, tree cover, yeah. things like that. <clears throat> and I've never found one that makes my life 
any easier than yeah. just bringing a power bank. Um, I, I do like the uh, the concept of it, which yeah, is like too, getting too, the yeah. sun to charge your batteries for you, you know. So yeah. it's a very good way of doing it. But and you know, if you're camping or yeah. something like that, then it, it could be good. But I've I've honestly never found one that I found works well enough. Yeah, I love. I just read in what what Brian and Diane's on the live as well. Hey, Diane. Um, but Brian says something there. You can prep for your trip as much as you like. But the one bit of advice I took away from going to Everest Base Camp is trust in your guides. Ah, oh, mate, brilliant. No, uh, Bry came with us actually just 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 before lockdown, and actually got stuck out in the pool uh, for ten days. He didn't mind. He had um, oh, he was, unlimited he was, beer he in the was hotel. So devastating. <laughs> I remember but, uh, he was ringing me every day and saying, "Dave, come on, the life at the <laughs> bar is." Um, yeah. But no, he's, 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 you are right, um, Bry. Yeah, but trust in your guides; they will guide you, look after you, and you'll have a, an awesome trip as well. And that goes on like the altitude stuff, the trip prep. There's, there's so much you can train for but sometimes yeah you've got to rely on on the people that are looking after you yeah um obviously you've got to take personal responsibility of your health and your pace and your hydration you, things you can control yeah but then your, your guide is there as a as a kind of support to, to look after you and yeah great great to hear and diane um looking for, I, I can honestly say is down to earth with an almighty crash I, you know what i saw someone else post in the group actually around um i think it might be was it emily um just about what it's like going what it's like going back into normal life after an expedition or a trek it's quite it is hard. hard it is nice. it can be quite weird actually and difficult but remember what you've achieved and those memories and the people you meet and also there's the next adventure to aim for now, to. honestly the, the only way i find to reduce that feeling is to go more often yeah the first time i came back i was really i don't say down but i was yeah. missing i was yeah. pining yeah. after the country I left behind and I yeah it was really I struggled with it but when I went back and I was like oh, I got to relive it all again and then when I came back I had this sense of do you know what it's like I can go back whenever I want yeah and I felt better about it so all you have to do Diane is book on more trips <laughs> well Diane is I know yeah. <laughs> she's booked on nearly every trip we do but um oh no it's uh, Lorna um off to Killian Feb and my sister uh, find out how many are going in our group of five. Yes. Um, if you, Lorna, not not sure if you downloaded the app, um, you'll be able to see roughly how many people. I mean, there's some people that will reschedule and change. I think we've had a lot of movement over the last um, over the last kind of couple of years uh, in terms of people rescheduling and things. Um, but if you want to know, just drop us an email and we can tell you the rough numbers. We'll be able to tell you exactly kind of the individuals. But um, or you can post in the High Altitude Ever Trekkers group. Put your date in. And then people will comment and say, yeah, I'm going on the trip and everything, just so you can get a feel of, of who's on your trip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good luck. It's not far away. I'm sure you'll have a nice, easy Christmas ready to, to actually kill it in, in February. You're going to love it. We, we did uh, kill you in February. It's a great time to go. Jerome's asked, do we do post-trek counseling? Yes, we do, Jerome. If you head to our website, go to the destinations page, <laughs> um, and then click on the destination and then the book now button, um, guaranteed <laughs> to make you feel better. Uh, um, but no, yeah. Um, Another thing for Lorna actually is to yeah. post in the high altitude ever trackers group when you're going, and quite often you'll you'll get to know people that way. Did you just say that? I just said that. I literally put. Is he joking? <laughs> Do you know what? As you were saying it, I wasn't sure if I thought it. That is or if mad. I, wow, Dave. Wow. I wasn't sure if I. I must have heard you and thought it's it like was we're good. on. It's like it's like we we, we talk about the same stuff. It's I know. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> but you're right. You know what Bry was saying. That I was thinking the same, Bry. Uh, post track counseling is on the Tuesday tune in because then we can talk about new adventures, right? Yeah. Um, but no, whatever you're up to now, I think, well, we've, we've, we've covered an hour. Um, we hope it's been a little bit useful today. I know we've talked about a wide range of stuff, not all of them trip hacks for high altitude, but some of them are. I hope that's been useful. Um, whatever is going to happen over the next week, good luck. You're going to make the summit. Yeah, no, I'm really, ex really excited for it. Thank just you to everybody it. that's just uh, commented and wished me luck as well. I mean, um, yeah. it's funny because I was thinking about this the other day and I was chatting to someone and I said, you know, like, Tupacal, it's not, it's not Everest. It's yeah. not the biggest or the longest expedition. But for some people, it is their Everest. Yeah. For some people, yeah. it is the thing that got them to high altitude. Yeah. And it's important not to underestimate it. And it's important to go at it with that mindset. This yeah. is your Everest today. Yeah. You know, and that's how I'm going at it. Good man. Well done. Can't wait. Get that yep. summer picture. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and um, yeah, you'll meet my replacement next Tuesday after <laughs> I've uh, come and find me on the mountain in years to come. I'll be the, wow, I'll be the one frozen. The no, no, no. Brilliant. Um, no, I hope it's been useful today. Um, I know some, some light humor as always. 
Um, but yeah, I'll be back next week. Uh, Thanks, we've Laura. actually got Thanks, Wreck and Mountain Rescue uh, coming on next week, which is really good. Um, just to talk about how how they do it, how they support the mountains. Um, I'm sure we'll be getting updates from Dave and um, and from Jen and from Zach when they're on Tupcal. Um, but yeah, any uh, anything else? Do drop us a message. Wish us luck for tonight, uh, the British Travel Awards. We're really excited. We're going to be heading to London very soon to start at half six. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to do the Tuesday tournament before we leave. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll see. I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Awesome. Good luck at the awards. Thanks, mate. Yeah. We'll do. I'm going to go and punch the tires of the competition. So <laughs> <turn up. laughs> Brilliant. All the best, guys. Bye. Bye.